so 70 thousandths. Old steel, 70 thousandths. And a clutch, steel, which is number three steel, number three clutch, four. Four clutch. All right. We're going to flat sand this other plate. Now, this other plate looks like just another steel, even though it's a top plate. If you look, it looks like a little thicker. And there is another new steel in the kit, but it's just 70 thousandths, and this one's over 90 thousandths. So don't be fooled into using this extra steel that comes in the kit and replacing your bottom plate with it. You'll have clearance problems. We'll flat sanded that 90 thousandths, and I put the Spacer ring in there. All right, next step in assembling the 09G is you have this hub here. There's a bearing race, goes in the bottom, and then the bearing faces down into here. Make sure the bearing goes all the way down, line it to the hubs. And you want to make sure your uh, the teeth of your clutches here remain lined up. You may have to take a small screwdriver to pick and move them around a little bit. will become critical later when you're trying to put your other parts in here. These are not lined up just right. They will fight you. Okay. Now next is the drum previously assembled and it has a bearing race here too. And then check your teeth on your clutches here. Look to see if the teeth moved on the clutches here. Then the planetary assembly. Can you see how the planets now have dropped down to where they look level with the sun gear? Gives you kind of an idea that you're, you're all the way down through all the clutches.
last drum. So we've got all the clutches lined up nice and neat. In hopes that it'll be easier. go. It's down in there. And this has a tricky angle to get it down in here. And it has a cutaway right here you need to pay attention to. This faces the ring gear on the differential. And then as you're going down here nice and straight, you see it hits things. So you tilt up this way. Tilting it up toward the pinion gear and slide it up underneath the bearing for the pinion gear and then as you get to a certain point you straighten it out and let it drop down flat. Squeeze a little bit make sure and then look at your ceiling rings here on your shaft make sure they're centered a little bit so that when you go to put your pump in here you won't have a piece of ceiling ring sticking out and get cut. At this point, you sure don't want to cut a ceiling ring. You have to start over because you have to buy a whole other kit if you need a, another ceiling ring. Make sure you have the seal here and here. If you've lost your original seals, do not panic. They do come in the kit little packet looks like this no rings and seals and there's one of them right there under my thumb take some trans gel put it here make sure that you don't lose the seal Just get right in there If your pump has a gasket here, make sure you measure it. This one was 30 thousandths. If the one that comes in the kit is thinner, you cannot use the thinner gasket or you won't have any clearance. And you will have problems. Getting the pump all the way down can be a struggle sometimes because the sun gear is down in there and the pump shaft has to spline with it and it'll fight you sometimes. What I wanted to show you here is just like these seals right here, you've got one more once you get the pump in there, which is the third one. So if you haven't put three of these seals in, then you're missing, you missed one. A new pump o-ring okay two longer bolts <clears throat> remember you had a dowel pin here and a dowel pin here so the two longer bolts go there. The medium sized bolt is right here. And then three shorter bolts here, here, and here. Twelve millimeter.
reach around the back side where the valve body used to go and grab the clutches and make sure they're not bound up after you tighten the pump down. Okay, a couple of things to note here. On the bell housing, take these three bolts out and I take this sheet metal out of here before I put it in the cleaner. The cleaner meaning the big, the big part washer. That way all the spray can get down in here between these things, fins and stuff, and underneath where this sheet metal is to get it all clean. Then of course there's the linkage which you remember when we disassembled it, it's this long rod goes through here. The first part though is the parking pole. It has to go back in here and then it has a little rod that goes in here and goes in from the back side and has a plug that plugs up the hole. You have to put that in. Because the parking pole, the rod, then the plug is the third thing. Fourth thing is this bracket here. Yeah. Oh, and this spring, I'm sorry, not this bracket, but this spring right here has to be hooked on the parking pole before you can put this. And then there's a bolt here and a bolt down here. See where my finger is? There's a bolt right there. And they're both 10 millimeter. Then your park bullet sticks down in here and your rooster comb up here. And it just kind of hovers here. And then last you put the big long rod up in there and put the roll pin in it. And then we'll have to put silicone all over here and put the bell housing on. And double check again, one, two, three seals. And make sure you put your new axle seals in. Another thing to make note of is, is to replace this speed sensor and this speed sensor here. Both these speed sensors are notorious for setting codes. Going bad and setting a code. So you don't want to go through all this and one of these speed sensors go bad, set a code, or worse yet, go bad and cause some kind of operational problem and burn up the unit. If you look at one of my other videos, you'll see where we completely rebuilt this valve body and updated the solenoids. We used the Transgo shift kit or Transgo update kit. So watch that video and you'll see what all we did to the valve body. Because in this video, we'll just be installing the already done valve body and solenoids. The accumulator goes in here first and then the double springs. Back here is the area where I was moving the clutches. It was off camera and you couldn't see it. I was moving the clutches to make sure that they weren't clamped down or bound up, which they're not. See them moving there. They do have clamps. When setting the valve body in place, make sure there's a feed hole here where the valve body seals off right here. And then there's a bolt hole here. This wire comes up in between. There's a gap between. And then it lays over here and goes around like so. There's going to be a piece of linkage here later for the manual valve. So we'll have to get that around that safely. Down here, the two wires. Let's make sure you can see. There's two wires come up through here right where this valve goes. There's a gap here where these two wiring harnesses can come up here. Now the two new speed sensors that we replaced, their wires come up through here. And as you can see, they come with a new bracket. It goes right here. And we'll be taking that bracket off and replacing it with this one. And this bracket, we'll be taking that bracket off and replacing it with this one. Alright, 
and then this wiring harness we're gonna we're not gonna connect any of this until after we've got our linkage hooked up our bolts in so that we can make sure we run this in a safe place but you can see already that this goes here and this bracket holds it in place then you have the connector for the switch then the connector for the speed sensor then another connector for the other switch and then these are going to go to the solenoids which will show you these two solenoids right here these two solenoids here this one here and then on down the line here here and here I'll show you a finished product for now we're gonna move all this stuff out of the way that way we can get our bolts installed so now we're gonna have all four long ones Remember, with any set of bolts, you never tighten any of them until all of them are in place. The two mediums that have brackets with them, one goes here. Oh, and this bracket. has a little finger right here and that finger needs to catch over here the idea is to catch this wire like so and hold it in place so it doesn't touch the linkage <sighs> This one goes here. And these are medium length bolts. Not the long bolts, not the two short, shortest bolts. There are a total of four of the long bolts and six of these medium length bolts. And these other two go right here. Six, six medium length bolts. One, two, three, four, five. Did I count that wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six medium length bolts. Okay. And then the two shortest bolts here and here. Now I'm working with these bow bodies. I have a quarter inch speed handle with an eight millimeter for these little bolts right here. I hold these wire connectors and stuff and these brackets that hold the pins that hold the solenoids. I have a 10 millimeter socket on a regular speed handle.
There, I think that'll be better for all of us. Y'all can see and I can get in here. I'm just running these down at this point. And there's a reason why I still don't use any electric or anything like that with valve body bolts or any bolts that are this small. I really like to be able to feel how much torque I'm putting on these things. I'd like to be able to feel too if there's any resistance, which would indicate there being some kind of problem. Like something caught in between the valve body and the case, or something wrong with the threads. Okay, now we'll go back over it. Okay, torque. Torque. What I'm going for is about 20 foot pounds here. Which, is, if you have not done thousands of units, you need to get out the torque wrench. I want to let you get a good look at where all the wire connectors and wire harnesses go. Obviously, you're going to have to be careful when putting the pan on where these two harnesses come out. And you're going to have to be careful of moving this around once we get the linkage in and get it to stay right where it's supposed to be. But most importantly, see the two colors for the first solenoid. Black and white on the second solenoid. Colors for the third solenoid. Fourth solenoid. Fifth solenoid. The sixth solenoid. And then you have temperature, sensor, the first switch, speed sensor, connector, another switch, another speed sensor connector. Now obviously these speed sensor connectors are color matched. That makes that a lot easier. And they're vastly different colors. Even I can see this. I may not be able to tell you whether that's yellow or orange, but I can tell you that is some kind of blue. Okay, I found that this wire bracket works so much better if you turn it around Instead of it being this way, turn it around facing this way so that it holds that wire away from the linkage. It does not allow it to touch the linkage or be rubbed on by the linkage. See, and it does have a gap between it and the linkage rod when you put it in there that way. And now it's holding the wire in such a way there's no way. That wire can get over here and get in the linkage. There's no way that wire could get up and get into the linkage. It can go anywhere it wants to. 
still not rub on the wire. This bracket still seems fine in the position that I found it when I took this apart. Like I said before, it's looking more and more like somebody at least had this valve body off before I took it apart. Looking at this and how things make sense and looking back at the video of where I took the valve body off, there are some differences. So we're going to tackle these bell housing case bolts. This is what we're up against. Very long, long, medium, <clears throat> and then all the shorter ones, and then the two special ones. And the extra long goes here, and I don't know if you can see this, but I had put an XL right here. Of course, I've got the gray silicone all around here on my ceiling surface. The long one goes right here. I'm sure you can't see this on the camera, but there's an L scratched right here. The long one. The medium one goes right here. Then the two with studs on them go here and here. You have 16 of these shorter ones. And these are all 12 millimeter heads. Go down in the bell. Last one, Uno Ultimo. I started these too because they're really close to the Dowel pins. Again, this kind of stuff I like doing with a speed handle, speed handle by hand, because I can feel if anything seems wrong. I can watch and see if anything doesn't look right, and I can stop before there's any damage. Whereas with a even a small air gun or electric impact. By the time you notice something's wrong, you've already 
cause damage. When I get all these run down, then I'm going to come back along and tighten them the rest of the way. Some of these are going to require a swivel socket or even a wrench in the case of this one back here in the back to do the final torque on it. Swivel socket. Run it down a certain amount with a ratchet wrench. Once it's down far enough, it's barely enough room for your swivel socket to get in there. Then you can go back and do a final tightening. Again, we switch to the swivel socket. Then you'll have these three short bolts for the filter. Of course, that's pretty self-explanatory. And the pan bolts, so. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Put your questions down below. Until next week, get off the couch and get dirty.